Hey friends, it is Melissa Morrow with Vintage Bee Design, and today I'm going to show you how to upcycle a vintage shutter that was given to us. So we have no cost involved, and how I'm turning it into multiple projects for our Diamond D Vintage Market that is coming up next weekend. This is a broken shutter that was given to us. It has um, obviously seen better days, but this is part of, if you remember a few months back, one of our viewers gave us a whole bunch of headboards and all kinds of things, and this is one of the pieces. There's actually two of them. And today I'm gonna break it apart and show you a market project I'm gonna do. And so this morning, Sue wants to stop into Tractor Supply. I do. What are we doing? I'm picking up some supplies so I can try and make something. Oh, okay. She shops differently than I do, but that's okay because we make different kinds of things. Here we go. I am fortunate that my husband and I have built up quite a workshop over the past few years, and I'm going to be showing you some of the tools that I get to use. But understand that you can rip this apart with, say, a hand-operated jigsaw, and you can do the sanding with an orbital sander or other sander, a belt sander. I have um, really good tools in this workshop because my husband is a woodworker, and I've been a woodworker for probably about 20, 30 years. So we've built up an accumulation of these power tools, and I want to show you that um, we have the confidence to use them and how easy it does make the system if you can. I wanted to note that this is a drum sander, not a planer, and I am just sort of examining how much of the paint I want taken off of these. It seems like there's a lot of glue, or perhaps they were painted another color before this uh, that might have been a really thick black or brown. And anyway, I'm just going to trim these off so they look rustic. I am happy with how these have come out after sanding on both sides. Now it's time to trim these down. I basically make them the same um, length for each of them and cutting off both ends to give me nice clean cuts. And then afterwards, I cut them roughly in half. I did not measure and then added a little drill hole. I think I used about a quarter of an inch bit, um, maybe three eighths of an inch bit to um, have a place to hang from. Then I'm going to paint a simple little rough box. Remember this is a rustic looking rough box, two coats with Fusion's casement. And I'm using a pretty firm brush just because I want to fill out the space very fast. And I've got a lot of these to do. Okay, I am enjoying that. That's, that's pretty cute. Mm -hmm. I can't keep plants alive though. Okay, so I have all of these little um, blocks, basically white blocks that I've painted on here. And then I have printed up some sayings in reverse. I have reverse image them. And I will have this available for you um, to download. And anyway, so I've got a couple different, a uh, couple different sayings in reverse. I've cut them out of a piece of paper and lined them up, and then I'm going to use um, Fusion's decoupage and transfer gel to make the words off the paper stick to my boards. So let's get started with that. Because not all of these are exactly the same size, because I freehanded it, and not all the sayings are exactly the same size because they're in different fonts. What I've done is gone ahead and sort of met up the ones that match to better sizes. Okay, so you wanna take your decoupage gel, your transfer medium, and you just wanna put a nice thick layer on, and then you wanna take your words and center it over, you know, whatever spot you're gonna do here. I'm gonna to try to center mine in this, and then I am going to make sure that lays down really tightly without any bubbles and you do not need to put any top coat over it we're just going to let this dry overnight it says that it recommends six to eight hours i have tried this before where i've tried to rush it with the heat gun and it doesn't work very well so be patient let it dry overnight and then i'll show you how to take it off or six to twelve hours you know if you could do it in the morning you could take it off in the evening but do not try to rush this with the heat gun. Sometimes I think this is how I become a hoarder because I also found in my stash um, 
some of these uh, napkin leftovers from a previous project and decided that I would go ahead and decoupage them on as well. Um, just little bits of them that I found. So this full napkin actually is over here and it says, have a very Merry Christmas. And there's the reindeer and then there's the words. But here I have put just a sliver of the reindeer on this section. And on this board, I've actually cut up the words and done them this way because they were too wide to do that way. So I'm just gonna have some fun and and play with these little leftover pieces to use up some of the boards where I have a bunch sitting, but um, I'm gonna do these in batch sections. So I have a bunch of different projects. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at these and um, let's see, I've got some water. I've got a sponge. I'm gonna get my sponge a little wet. Go right over the paper. You can kind of see it sinking in already. And once my paper is fairly saturated, I'm just gonna go in and start pulling the paper off with my fingers. And you see the words stay behind. So I do wanna be sure that I get all the paper off. You can kind of see like a little line where the paper was, a little bit of texture. So I wanna be sure to work that off with my finger and it comes right off. Just, you know, try not to work so hard over the words that you pull the words off, but you do wanna be able to pull that layer of paper right off of it. I'm kinda of using my fingernail a little bit on that edge. more water there. Probably should have had a napkin to wipe off. Just so I can wipe the water off. So you can see there's a couple little areas like there's a little bump here and there was a little bump here. So the letters didn't stick as well where those bumps were, but I am not at all worried about that because obviously these are super rustic looking. You can still read it really well. So here is another one that I did right before I came on camera. So now I'm just gonna go through all of these and get that part done. For these tags, I used some of my candy cane string and then attached bells. For the ones that had wording on them, I attached a single bell and then a ribbon. And for the ones that had pictures, I attached three little rusted bells that I purchased off Amazon and tied them off and then attached the, the ribbon. I think these are perfect for present tags or for ornaments. Let me know how you would use these in the comments below. Okay, so I didn't do the typical glamour shots with this project. I think just because it was feeling a little overwhelming. Okay, so this is how much I actually got out of that shutter. There's quite a bit here. Um, I haven't counted, but I believe, because I did actually tag everything, I believe it's around 80 tags that I got. And I am listing these for $3.95 each. So I put the cute little bell and a little bit of jute on these and a little bow. And I think these reindeer are really charming. Um, these are actually one of my favorites, but I didn't show you some of the other ones that I made. I found some additional napkins that I had. And so I have some cute little gnomes and what's the deer. I have some pretty roses and maybe one of my favorites are I have these little chickadees that I think are really adorable and the chickadees actually had two on a tag so I actually got two of these um, gift tag ornaments per individual square of napkins so in a single napkin I actually could get eight of the birds and these were just leftovers that I had this is all from the the single shutter and in addition to that I was able to make 
some of these little cuties. Again, with the different things that I had, um, different napkins that I had in my stash. And then wait till you see the next ones. I have been obsessing over a Pinterest page that I started um, and it's called Little Houses. I will try to remember to leave the link in the description. And I decided I really need to try to do these little houses. So I'm gonna start off with my leftover pieces of shutter and I'm gonna cut off these little blocks where the sides attached to the bottom. Once they're trimmed up, then I'm going to cut them together so that I can have um, equal sizes. This is gonna be a little front house and a little bit of a back house. You'll see when it's done. Next, I am just using a straight edge small piece of wood to cut a roof line, and then I will use the bandsaw to cut through this. You could use um, a different saw. The bandsaw is great because this is two inch thick wood. This, these started off life really as a two by four. Next up is the bandsaw, and here I am cleaning things up, but I'm also creating some angles on the parts of the little house. As you can see, things are starting to take shape and the roof line is created by using some of the tags that I actually, that didn't come out perfect when I did them. And so I wanna pay homage to this color. The little blocks that you see there on the side are the ones that I cut off initially. So here is my first attempt. This is actually the first one of three that I did and I still have a ton of wood relatively um from this single shutter but how cute is that okay i am partial i know that i made it and maybe i shouldn't think it's so cute but come on it's itty bitty it's tiny it's it's the little chimney is a screw and this little piece here and wait i'm gonna show you the other one no, not this one. Where was it that I had it? Oh, here. Um, these little pieces, these are part of the popsicle stick that I cut off when I, I used a pair of scissors to cut these off and it sort of perforated the edge. So can you see? And so I saw it sitting on my table after cutting it off and I decided that it made such a cute little planter box that I decided to use it. This is the actual teal. I wanted to keep some of the original teal from the shutters on here. So everything is done to incorporate that. And then the second one that I did, which is my favorite, is this one. I still wanna make a little tiny umbrella to go in this little um, patio so upstairs patio have a little tiny umbrella right here but i haven't had time to do that yet we've had a lot going on um anyway i think it came out darling and then final i do i like these little um the little ribbon there and then finally i have this one and you can see this was in the video when i was cutting up the um the sticks I said I kept these little pieces and so I have a little box of these little pieces and I did end up using one here and um, I have a bunch saved for future projects so anyway this is my garage this is my two-car garage um, cute little windows and here and again this is all made from scraps I have no idea how I'm gonna price these but I was thinking considering that after I have a bunch made, we just started on Whatnot. We did our first auction on Friday and it went pretty well that I might make a collection of these little tiny houses. And when I do, I will have a special Whatnot sale on them and you can bid on your favorite little houses. Anyway, because I have no idea. I really just was making them because it was fun and it seemed like something interesting to do with the scraps because literally I've been obsessing over this Pinterest page. Okay, and speaking of whatnot, we do have another sale coming up Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 
which is tomorrow night. Um, if you're watching this on the day that it comes out, which it, my videos typically come out Sunday at 10 a.m. And so this will be Monday, 1113 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I am making up all kinds of different DIY kits for this particular auction. So this is being mostly um, DIY supplies. So I'm going to get rid of some of my spindle stash in here. I'm going to get rid of some of my metal. I am making up cute little packets of, and like this is pretty thick actually, of transfer pieces. So um, anyway, they'll all be categorized. Uh, you know, I've got a bunch of ones with flowers, some with um, I would call this like entomology and then more with flowers. And then this is sort of a randomness, but I've got like boho. I have bigger ones with bigger pieces. I have really big ones here. And these are all going to be auctioned off on Monday at 7 p.m. I hope that you're able to join us. Thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. It, um, it means a lot to us and I appreciate all of you who stop by our vendor booth. Somebody stopped us today at Great American or when you come by market and see us and you say that you watch. It means a lot to both Sue and I that you take your time and spend it with here. And of course, all the amazing feedback that we always get from you. Um, it's amazing to hear how funny we are. That's always a surprise to us. Anyway, thanks guys. I will see you later this week. Bye. Okay, I can honestly say I did not expect to find these kinds of things at Tractor Supply. It's very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So this is what I actually got. Ida, put your tail out of the way. This is actually what I got out of that shutter 